I got six o'clock on the nose. Um, it is, what is today? It's Thursday the sometime. 17th. 17th. Mm. Uh, welcome to the select board meeting. Um, first item is set and just agenda. <coughs> Nothing? Everybody good? Anybody got anything? All right, let's roll. Agenda, we have next communication with the audience. Anyone here to discuss anything that's not on the agenda? What are we discussing? What do you mean? Uh, if you could state your name. Quick public yeah. service announcement. Yeah. We're going to be standing. Anywhere you like. <laughs> My name is Les. Uh, I'm uh, the public information representative from Alcoholics Anonymous for this area. And as part of my job, I want, I want to reach out to the communities and let you know what's going on with AA here and in Hardwood. We have two meetings going on right now. We have one on Monday night. Uh, the, uh, Tuesday night, and then uh, we went on Thursday morning at uh, St. John's. AA is um, sometimes gets a bad rap because uh, a lot of people think, well, it's a cult, it's uh, religious, it's this. All AA is, is is a place for people who can't quit drinking. That's what it comes down to. And um, it's a fellowship. We have, um, it's actually founded by two Vermonters. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean uh, Bill Wilson and a guy named Bob Smith, Bob Smith from St. Johnsbury, and they, in 1935, got together. Bill Wilson was on a business uh, job, a business uh, assignment, and uh, he knew he was going to drink, and he got a hold of Bob, and they started talking. And that's pretty much how AA works. It's one alcoholic talking to another. Um, we have. Um, in uh, in the Northeast Kingdom, we have about 35 meetings going on right now. I'll have some information if you'd like to, to look at. Um, it is a 12-step program, and that scares a lot of people, a lot of 12 steps. And what the 12 steps are really is, is a uh, kind of an AA's version of the wisdom of the ages that uh, they package for the alcoholic. It's, you know, they talk about it's not religious, it's spiritual. It's spiritual because the principles are, you know, help others, make amends, re uh, examine your life from time to time. You know, those are all things that, um, you know, if, uh, if there was such a thing as a cult, that'd be a good cult, I think. But uh, our Monday meeting, uh, we, have, we have open and closed meetings. The open meetings, anybody can attend. And it's anonymous, you know. Um, you don't have to give your first name if you don't want. Uh, the closed meetings are for those who identify as an alcoholic, and the only membership that, to be an AA, uh, it's a tough membership uh, requirement. All you got to have is a desire to quit drinking. That's all you got to have. The other thing about AA that people don't sometimes don't understand: AA welcomes uh, drug addicts, uh, anybody, anybody that, that, that wants help. Uh, the open meetings are designed to make people feel welcome when they come in. Uh, we feel like uh, AA might be the last best chance that somebody has to get into recovery. So, I don't know if uh, you have any questions or not, but uh, I really appreciate you giving me the time. And like I said, I left some information there. And uh, uh, hope that uh, I'm trying <coughs> within the community, I, I, I dropped some information off at the library, and I even dropped some information off at the police station. And I'm hoping that the, you know, the word will get out that you know, AA is here, and it really works. It can really help people. So thank you very much. Thank you, Lassie. Thank, thank you for coming. That's a good summary. Can you just say one more time the meeting times oh, that are okay. here? Monday at uh, 7 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, 7 p.m. Yeah. And that's at the uh, Church of God. And then uh, Thursday at 8 a.m. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, great. Next, select board, we have to approve minutes from the regular select board meeting of October the 3rd. Move to approve the minutes of October the 3rd. Any uh, discussion? Second. No, we have That's good. <laughs> hmm? Any discussion? Uh, I thought they looked good. All in favor of approving minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next time manager report, Mr. Upson. 
Hello, uh, welcome to the meeting tonight. Um, so we have uh, an update on the lead service inventory, um, which is if we which Amy submitted on Wednesday. Uh, Jason's here to talk about the wastewater plan, but he can maybe ask answer any questions about uh, the lead service inventory if you have specific questions. We have 65% on the customer side, 41% on the service side. That's the service side is on the other side of the curb stop, from the curb stop into the main, the water main. So we have to identify those as well. Those are ours. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, how are you gonna So what are your two numbers again? Or yeah. 65% on the customer side. It's done? 65 percent complete. Complete the survey. And we order. know what it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And this is a working document. Okay. This. okay so we're going to keep going forward. And then 41 percent on the service side. And that, that's from the curb stop back to the main. How do you know what that is without digging it up? Historical knowledge. <laughs> work that has been done on the water <coughs> system. You can so, see blueprints will show you. Yeah. Yep. Replacement, Replacement services. Projects. Okay. So. Um, we're working towards a 99.9% .9 goal um, in the next, you know, couple, of, in the next year, I would say. Um, so phase two is we have to. There's ways we can identify the line, the service line, but in some case, worst case scenario, we'd have to dig it up and check it. So. And we would have to. Worst case scenario. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But. I think and we're doing this why? It's a requirement by the it's an EPA mandate. Every 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 public water system in the country has to do it right now. Hmm. And there's a there's a ten year goal by the administration to replace lead services nationwide within ten years. <laughs> um, this is an ongoing project. So Dave, just an update. You actually have fifty five <laughs> on the municipal side and seventy eight on the customer side. Okay, so we're, we're so still a little. Let's thank right. some customers. We're tr we're tr That's good. It's information is trickling in. Seventy eight fifty five. Okay, it's good. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> this was a ten uh, la, uh, last Friday. Ten eleven number. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is as of yesterday. Good. So well, we want to tell people who might be watching that if they keep, still haven't done their survey, keep sending the information in. You are becoming the minority of people who are not participating in this program. <laughs> well, we, we spent, <laughs> but that's time. important. Yeah, we spent quite a bit of time last week knocking on doors after hours. Um, I, I was up here all week. Dave was out a few nights. Kenny was out a few nights. Uh, Amanda, Amanda was out. We we put out flyers for people. Um, we left a lot. There weren't a lot of answers on doors. Um, some people took the flyers, but gets lost yeah um, so I think that's what happened to you right I did it online yeah. <laughs> I think we should do it we should Pretty do it sure. on Halloween what's that we should do it on Halloween night <laughs> give it to check out people will yeah. ah, it's not not free. Free. <laughs> yeah good idea <laughs> okay moving along um, so I, I had a, a end of the season meeting with our uh, cemetery sextant Kirkyard services to get an update on the cemetery status and the work that was completed over the summer. Uh, our seven cemeteries, all of our cemeteries, um, they straightened 306 stones, they repaired 48 stones, and uh, fixed a little over a dozen sunken graves. I've noticed it in some of the cemeteries where they prop stones back up, they glued the stones back together. Um, so he's gonna give me another list of items to work on for next season to include repairing the shed, painting the shed, fence repair, um, the fence up at Center Cemetery is in need of <coughs> some TLC. So this is an ongoing project to make sure that, you know, the... the so we budget that in the line item now because all of our cemeteries are together. We have we a cemetery capital um, that we... I think that's from. an excellent way to handle our cemeteries. Mm -hmm. What's that? Contract them out, have someone uh, yeah. with an annual plan, budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seems pretty simple. Seems professional. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yep. Um, the, just an update on the insurance work at the fire station. The SCBA compressor and all of the associated equipment was installed, so that's operational. Um, and we've started to do some preliminary budget work 
to present to the select board. Um, we're working on that now. And then I had one additional dog bite. I just wanted to thank you, thank you for handling the throw the dog bite <laughs> stuff out there. I've had a, a crazy amount of dog bites in the last couple of weeks. So oh. I don't know, they, they must be feeling the, the, the moon. So the cool moon thing. Or <laughs> yeah. But that's it for me. Great. <coughs> Questions for Oh, oh. I have one, one more. So um, we did this is my, on my sticky note, so that's why. I, so we did crunch some numbers on the gravel pit and the stay mat crushing, and it, we made stay mat for 12.25 a cubic yard, and we're buying it in Danville for 16.75 a cubic yard. So that's before truck. <coughs> that's a tunnel. No, we did the conversion. We did the, we broke it down to cubic yards based on the truck loads and the past invoice. What was the Danville to total? Sixteen seventy-five cubic yards. So Sweet. We broke it both down cubic yards. <clears throat> you can check Casey's numbers if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, it's cheaper and it's closer. Yeah, and we um, out of the seventy-five thousand that we've allocated for the prep um, equipment consulting and the crushing of the 500 cubic yards, uh, we have about, out of the 75,000, we have about 20,000 left. And I've got a um, proposal from an engineer, from Molly Engineering, that's gonna do the Active 50 submission, um, and that's for $7,500, so I'm gonna go forward with that. And then we'll any, take any other work we can do this year, or the, the so, crusher's out of there. Yeah, right? so the, hopefully the crusher's going to come back in in the spring, and we'll use the remainder of that twenty thousand to to crush that material because we won't have the blasted material. Yeah, yeah, and we'll sort through that and keep the rock, and then we'll get um, we'll get some eight inch minus some rip wrap still in there too. Part of that was also blasted. Yeah, so there'll be some sorting of that. Yeah. So that'll be ditch stone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that so eight inch minus is what we typically use for ditch stone? Well, we've done four to six, but that's gone bye bye now. Yeah. Just because of the weather weather events, it's just not holding no more. So, so we've gone up to eight inch. Okay. So great. That is great. Still going good. <coughs> Thank you. Um, and we'll keep on giving you the information and keep on working the material up there. And for the Permitting, is that anticipated that we get that done by next year or something? I think it's going to be done this winter. But it, yeah, right off the bat. Into, okay. Yeah. Um, we were, we collected the, si uh, the seismic readings from the blasting. Mm -hmm. So we were, able, we were able to submit that with that 250 amendment, which is going to help. Oh, okay. Because we put them in, in, on private property north and south of yeah. the Great. So they'll have that data point. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank That's you. It. Yep. Uh, all right. Moving along. Next is road foreman report. Tom Fadden. <coughs> uh, so we've been plugging along. Uh, we've gotten out through uh, Nichols and Dutton all, out through there, Macville area. We got that all done. Uh, we've gotten for flood parts. We've uh, we did Smith Farm, Tucker Brook, uh, K Brook. Uh, Marshall bunker uh, that ends all done and gotten covered today we've been working on over towards Hardick Farms Porterbrook area Pumpkin Lane uh, we ended up going around Mountain View and Ward Hill finishing that up so tomorrow we'll be heading towards Montgomery uh, Stevens Lane uh, Bailey Hazen Road uh, hopefully we can get that end buttoned up hopefully tomorrow and then by next week the weather looks like it's still good. We'll be heading on Bridgman side and start up through there. Uh, we did do the crush ledge on Hardwick Farms. So we did 300 and I think it was like 320 yards, 322 yards. So that's from the bridge just about to the top top of the hill. Uh, and we, we put the chloride right to it. We made like seven passes right on it. Great. Uh, I asked the guys how it looked today because I was in a grader over towards Ward Hill and they said it looks like it's packing good. Uh, we were kind of <coughs> so-so spreading it down the hill 
because there's a lot of stone so we didn't know whether you know maybe next time they come around I'm gonna have Trevor come back over and take a look look at it too uh, from the uh, crushing just to see if we needed to crush it down a little, little bit more so we can get more fines to it so it would pack a little bit better uh, but the way it looks right now it looks like it's working good so how thick did you spread it uh, probably, probably about six eight inches thick so pretty thick yeah okay. yeah all right uh, and is that that was that must have taken care of most of that pile no uh, we still have uh, i think probably a couple hundred more yards left so but uh, gravel pile is going fast so uh, probably by the time we get done the end of next week we'll probably be almost through it all so <coughs> on the roads uh, the guys have been going around doing some of the hit list that opi had uh, getting that stuff done uh, some of the stuff around the village uh, they fixed a couple headers that were uh, uh, that let loose on Hardwick farms today got that uh, we still got to go up town farm the upper park to fix the ditch area up through there uh, so hopefully by the end of next week I'm hoping we'll have everything all buttoned up for the winter so the weather's going to treat us nice weather today. permitting mm -hmm. yes yeah. yeah so yeah that's a big help um, maybe it's changed it, but someday I was over I mean, when did we meet the historic person for the, the Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday. It was yesterday. So, oh yeah. It was just yesterday. It was just so cold. It's <laughs> different. Just different. Yeah. I think we saw that the Creamery Road sign was still laying down over there. Is that? Oh yeah, it's going back up. It's going back up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether the guys end up putting it back up today or not. But okay. that was the other thing they were doing yesterday too. They were running around. We got a whole load of new signs. So they're running around putting all new signs up and stuff around town and stuff. Yeah, a pickup truck or something hit it this time. So actually coming out from Creamery Road because the sign was bent out, Josh said. Mm -hmm. So they drove up towards the, the uh, telephone pole where it was, hit it, and then backed up and turned and went that way. So clever. Alright, so if you're the first Third time's a charm. We shame so. people on HCTV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just kidding. There was a sheriff down in the south that did that. Point okay. all people out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. I will find you. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you. Um, next up, police department report given by Mike Henry. Well, that was good news. I don't have anything to report at this point. So we're just trying to keep our heads above water and with staffing and plug it away. How many mm -hmm. more weeks do we have the, the recruit down at the academy for? She'll be ready to go by January 1, hopefully. Yeah. And she's doing well. She's doing very well. Great. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, good. Questions? No news is good news. Uh, next up, we have a Hardwick Electric Department reporting at Roger Freehold. Right. Hello, everybody. I'll come up to the front row. Um, things to report for you. Um, one, I want to just confirm what I think some of you have observed already, that our interim general manager, Scott Johnstone, um, is having a, a really good effect on things. We had assumed that he was coming in to be kind of a caretaker placeholder, you know, to give us coverage until we had hired a new GM. But he has enough experience and relevant close by and nearby experience that he's just had a nice approach of um, listening to customers, listening to people in the community, and really importantly for us, listening to the employees, the office employees and the field employees. And we knew we had issues, particularly in the field, because we had people turning over and leaving, which left us understaffed. And he was pretty quickly able, through his experience and the way he goes about it, to, to hear, you know, what the real issues and concerns were. And then as he started addressing those things, he was in turn, I think you heard last month, <coughs> Miles, when he reported that he's now got us fully staffed in the field, which we were afraid might take us much longer. But I wanted to give credit where it's due to him that it's, he's changing the culture over there in a, in a good way, where I think the employees are feeling listened to. Now, part of that means that they're drawing to his attention things that have been neglected that are irritating them. Uh, and some of the themes are equipment maintenance, sometimes involving safety, 
facilities, conditions, and repairs. And he's um, put in front of the the, uh, the commissioners a list of projects. Some of them were already approved, and they were sort of half completed by the, his predecessor. And he's now basically just trying to get them done. Because I think it's especially annoying when they rip out the bathroom and they don't finish building the new bathroom. But that's just one example of, of other things in the office area. We also had some roof leaks. Um, so he's um, one by one listening, identifying, make, you know, making a list of things that make sense, bring it to the commissioners, we're approving it, and he's getting the things done. So I think all in all, that's a real positive thing. Um, <clears throat> really appreciate that uh, an interim general manager is actually having a, a huge impact. We are continuing to recruit for the general manager. We have, as, as you know, I think we have a, a candidate um, that's in front of us and, and uh, you know, we'll get it filled but we're in a good place, I think, in the interim arrangement. Um, the, another area that uh, we've often reported to you, and I think running the town, it's no different than, than Hardwick Electric. You know, most things that come up, especially regulatory, uh, usually involve extra cost. We actually had a remarkable <coughs> thing that, that none of us were aware was coming, which was there was a ruling on where, how transmission fees were gonna be charged to entities like Hardwick Electric. And they're actually called wheeling fees, which is basically if power, when we buy power, when BEPSA buys power for us from someone who's a long way away generating power, it has to get here and it goes over other people's lines. And those other people's lines uh, have traditionally been paid a fair amount of money to get the power to us. So um, GMP has been charging us a fair amount of money in those so-called wheeling fees and uh, in particular hydro, we get a lot of hydro energy from New York State that comes across. And uh, this new ruling is gonna actually save us $223,000 a year, which is, you know, I, I thought it was noteworthy to mention it. Because yes, <laughs> just about everything else we hear about these days is gonna cost us $200,000 a year. So, so that's a good one. And, you know, um, on, now on the, other side of that, you remember the July flood came through and really hammered Volca to get the hydro facility. And we've been working through assessing the damage and what the costs are going to be for, for repairs. And the penstock is going to be a very expensive repair. What that has done is it, it's put us into a new cycle with FEMA of getting funds. So we're in that process of assessing the damage, filing with FEMA. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be a long time before Hardwick, between before the Walcott Hydro facility is back up and running. It should have been running by the end of the summer, but of course July set it all back again. So uh, stay tuned on that. The order of magnitude is could be as large as you know a million dollars of repairs from from July. Just on the pens for mostly. Well, it's the mostly the pens dock, mostly. Mm -hmm. So that's an update. You'll, you'll hear more buzz about that, and, and we'll work through it. But fortunately, there's funds available, and we'll just work through to get them. The other thing you might hear about, you remember we reported that we approved the AMI, which is the metering that's going to go out in the next couple of years to all households. Um, VEPSA is, um, is, for all of the municipals, is working on a process for each of us that'll be a technology roadmap. Because when you think of the AMI as an enabling technology, the meter's there and can do a whole bunch of things. We'll have a basic level of information and benefit from it, but then it can also enable different billing rates for electric vehicles. It can be different time of day billing rates. It can, it can enable a whole bunch of things. So VEPSA is doing a technology roadmap so that we can pull together um, the right approach. And that's an example of the kind of thing that we're not really staffed to do here at Hardwick Electric, where we need some more high power capabilities to pull it together. So that's going to be going on. Um, and often, you know, ratepayers ask those questions or what are we doing to stay, <coughs> to get closer to the leading edge, not stay on the leading edge. 
Uh, and that's an example of, of one thing that's just kicking off now. Um, the other thing that we approved at the last commissioner's meeting is you might recall hearing some complaints from ratepayers where when they need to upgrade their, their service, and, and you know, typical reasons for an upgrade would be a big renovation of a home, and they might have had a really old service, and they needed to upgrade to 200 amp service from 100 or even less. There's also the issue of people who are putting in EV chargers or heat pumps or other things. So this whole concept of electrification is going to hit our older prop our older properties with the need for new transformers. And the way the policy used to be applied here, which we've changed, is that if there was a transformer on the pole serving your residence and it was inadequately sized, it would come down, it would go back to, to our yard, and it would be held for, for actually looking for a new place to deploy it, where it would fit. And then the individual, or the, the ratepayer, would pay the full cost of the new transformer. Mm -hmm. And what we voted on was that if that, that transformer coming out still has any book value, that is, it has been depreciated down to zero. Um, that if it still has that value in it, that we'll net that out of the cost of the deal. So that the, the, the person getting the upgrade is just paying the increment of cost for the new one. Now, some projects that'll be important. Some places, if it's a really old transformer, it won't help a lot. But it's just an example of what we're, we're hearing and we're understanding that people just are not going to be happy if they find out that to do a EV charger, to do some new electrification in their home, that they have a, a big transformer expense. So we're going to try to find ways to, to ease, on, ease up on that. So those are the key, key topics I wanted to cover. Anything else in the way of questions for what we're doing? Oh, no, sounds good. Yeah, that's good. That's positive. I mean, I'll chime in with your kudos to um, Scott that um, I recently had an inquiry from someone at CAE looking to try to estimate their usage and their billing for their new building at Yellow Barn. And um, I sent her over to Scott, who replied quickly, courteously, yes, we can help you, and um, it's working on her. So it's just it's a good. Uh, I drove into the shop and uh, that yard is absolutely full of vehicles. Okay. Like, wow, it's been a long time since I've driven down here and into this yard. And and there's no room for no more pickups in the yard. So it's fully it's staffed. It's fully staffed, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Fully great. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's. it's uh, I've, heard, I've heard the chatter from the, from the staff, you know, on my end, diner gossip, the, the diner gossip. And, uh, they all seem really happy right now. They're all looking forward to a bright future. They all plan on staying around. So <coughs> all the things you, you know, quite contrary to what you used to hear in the diner. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's really positive. Yeah. So the so it, you know, we'll do our best to recruit someone with the right experience and the right capabilities. But <coughs> Scott is pretty unique in that he's got a lot of experience and a lot of seasoning and it's relevant experience because it's right here so that's hard to, hard to match. So I think it, it's a good example of what we've been trying to look to as a vision for the future is a lot more collaboration that instead of Hardwick Electric running as an isolated island that's defiantly doing whatever it wants to do that it really is collaborating more with yeah. neighboring municipals and that what BEPS is working towards is that we have an ongoing closer rapport with Morrisville, maybe with Johnson, and that they could have each other's backs and tackle problems together instead of separately. Well, we had and that's the, that's part of what you're talking right, about, right? And, to be. and we had the discussion with was it was it Scott that came and talked to us, you know, about the the future and the 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 little little utilities going to have to come together in a bunch of, bunch of different ways if it's going to be successful, because otherwise yeah. it's not going to be able to make it. So. But it, t it takes people who are uh, inclined toward being collaborative yes. to make it work, <laughs> which we've got right now. So we'll, we'll keep that in mind as we do the recruiting. Great. 
So that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Actually enjoyed the last couple of hydroelectric uh, <laughs> updates. And past 15 years, I don't think we can say that very much. Right? So, uh, <laughs> I, hear, I hear you. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Roger. Um, next up, we have a flood resilience report given by Kristen Lakey. <laughs> I just learned something. <laughs> hey, you need a permit or something? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. The, the bathroom wasn't finished. There's a long history in there. <laughs> oh, that's why they didn't have a permit. They didn't have a state permit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oops. Do you have that? I'm pulling it up right now. So this is not the comprehensive. We'd be here for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> um, I just picked a couple of topics and... So what's in our packet? That's the comprehensive? No, no I don't right. even think you have it in your packet. Dan. We had it in our folder. In our folder. In your not, folder. Not here, but in our folder. Yeah, folder. it was... Th so that's... It's just a... It's not the comprehensive. And I will have an updated comprehensive that I will drop into next month's um, October 7th. Okay. But I'm not going to be there. Yeah. Um, so... Well, this is plenty comprehensive for me. <laughs> but, yeah, it's not everything. It though. wasn't the 127 pages that this guy wants me to read. 176. No. Um, so if you can just, if, do you, is it easier for me to do it or you? Or? I can do it. Okay. Uh, nope. That's slide. Gotta go, you gotta slide. You gotta go back and go do the slide. Thank you. Okay. So I'm starting with the first four, which were the bought, properties we bought last year. You're all pretty well familiar with them, but I'm looking to next steps. So we have the Mill Street property where, if can we stay on that one for a second? I'll say, I'll say, Dave, how's that? Um, so the Mill Street property, where the inn was, came down the day before the second set of flooding in July. Um, we have requested a, um, we did a pre-application for a hazard mitigation grant. We received an, um, one of the few so far, requests to uh, apply for those grants. And we just heard this morning that the river program, which I will describe later, um, is going to be doing our application components. So that's a good Great. start. And I mean, we're looking at a $700,000 project that will be fully funded if it goes through. So all of these are together. Um, they did do a temporary stabilization in front of Hayes. This project would be doing um, would be doing stabilization, further stabilization of that entire what's become kind of like a, the mill pond returning, mm -hmm. um, and floodplain restoration, restoration. So taking out some of the fill, but restoring. If we were to do just an armoring, um, we would be seeing a lot more issues down in the low, downstream in Hardwick Center. Mm -hmm. We're seeing, some of the issues we're seeing now is because Route 15 got armored, mm -hmm. extensively. So the last thing we want to do is make it worse in the center because we're already having issues from the armoring that was done. Um, so this one is pretty much set. I just wanted to give you a heads up on what where it's at. Ding. Hey. <laughs> what? Where are the are you going to talk about what river is going to give us? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm going to. That's an, uh, number yeah. twelve. Okay. Um, so this was. Can this I, is. Do you want him? No, I want you. What? I'm going to ask a question about the previous slide. Yeah. Sure. Just time frame. So time frame. Because it looks like yes. Yeah, so. We're applying for funding. It's a big project. Mm -hmm. Roughly, what's a rough time frame? So our um, our application is due in November. Hopefully, we can have all our components done by then, which is engineering and, and um, benefit cost analysis and feasibility. Um, now that we know that River is going to be doing it, I think it's feasible. I was getting a little panicky yeah. because we are, this is one of the few. Um, golden tickets, you can apply. Mm -hmm. um, to put it in perspective, they received $400 million in requests, and they have $67 million. So we are one of the projects they felt was, should be pushed forward. Um, then it goes, so it goes through that step through to the state, and then it goes to FEMA. Two years? Three years? I don't know. This will okay. be our first one. This is, a, no. this is our first time. Not fast. Not so fast. Not going to be but fully. Next year. No. I don't believe so. <laughs> I don't believe so. But we do have an EWP, um, which could be coming any day now and could be happening next year to further stabilize. Okay. 
okay? Yeah. So that's kind of yeah. the mini dance we did because yeah. we know that EWP is not fast, it's faster, but it's faster than FEMA. FEMA, the point with this is that it's not going to cost a tax right. And it will eventually do the entire thing, not just a small right. piece. Yeah, great. Okay. So this is the property, um, Brian Palalonis, the owner of Caja Madera. It's flooded twice now. You can see that there is a, a unnamed river, stream, brook, becomes a raging river. Um, we do have permission to put, install a boulder barrier inside the states, right on the state's right of way, um, because we don't want it to become a site that gets utilized for mm -hmm. unusual behavior. Um, uh, and thoughts on next steps. I am happy to reach out to the Conservation Commission um, or any other ideas. It can have plantings, it can have trees. I think the boulders and let it grow back to nature. Yeah, if you don't mow it, it at zero cost to anybody. Okay. The only reason I say that is because we don't have the resources to take care of it. And if, well, we, that's do why anything, I if we make it nice, people will want to. Well, I, I did. Uh, that's why I did say trees. I mean, I, there is a program I could have attached. I could have gone for with trees, trees in Lamoille, but that is on Lamoille. But if this is not on the Lamoille, I, mean, I wouldn't be against trees. That is something up there. That's necessary. just a quick thought: is every spring the Conservation Commission gets a donation of small trees, that, yeah. uh, <coughs> so it doesn't cost us anything anyway. Oh, well, I wouldn't so, be against trees, but I don't think. I think we want to make it unattractive to stop. <laughs> oh yeah, so it, it would be like an intervale planting, which is just like a thicket, basically. It's not like a picnic. Yeah, no, I wasn't thinking, I, but I wanted to bring it to It's the already being here. utilized as parking. So you up through there. Wait, it's got one of the few, okay. it's the last spot with um, Wi-Fi. So uh, people stop there. I mean, there's a park here, I don't know. Really? Like. On the other side of the road? No, those yeah. buildings are right there. Like, oh, you see there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's just I can't get out there. Great. Um, <laughs> it's no big deal, but I'm just saying it's just another spot that'll be. Yeah. So I um, talk to the conservation commission. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Um, ding. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, this one is we. So we have two more on. Uh, this is the picture is of Carrie's Carrie Road, and the other one is on School Street in East Hardwick. Again, do you guys? What do you envision? I can talk to East Hardwick neighborhood. I can see if there's anyone over in that area who wants to put gardens in. Um, right now, they're just green space, and they can continue to be green space. But I'm trying to loop you guys in. So I think I think, think to having Eno do the work for East Hardwick totally makes sense if they're willing. I, I'm willing. Welcome to, to. I can talk to them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, School Street's right. That, that's pretty small, isn't it? It's very small, and it has a landslide still. Yeah. But but it could have some gardens or a bench or something, if they right. wanted to I do that. It wasn't too close to the landslide. <laughs> it's, not, it's not too close to the landslide, yes. <laughs> so these, this one and School Street are not scheduled to have any sort of no, armoring or to, anything no. to stop the continued erosion. So that's going to get, that green space is going to get smaller. Yeah. 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 That is one that I've I've targeted to see if we can do some um, like willows and etc. But again, it's it's a cost and it's not on one of the major <coughs> areas. So if and I find money for that, I will. So spend. I would say when we get around to figuring yeah, out what cover. we're going to do with the carrier road box cover, yeah, that could be a part of <coughs> right the new um, box cover, like that area. Part of that. Yeah. Okay. So I wouldn't put too much money into that site yeah. or time. Oh, I wasn't, uh, yeah, yeah, I was saying time, not yeah. money. Yeah, that could completely okay. change. Sorry. Okay, it's okay. The next <laughs> one is the, <laughs> that's okay. Okay, so I'm on page five. five, yeah. And that just says, so we have five more that went to, we have, we had six more that went to FEMA, <laughs> thing. hold on. We do. Oh, five more that went to FEMA from 2023. So I'm only focusing on 2023. Okay, so you guys are well aware of this one. Mm -hmm. It's the 41 Brush Street. It is um, a couple well, different things. We didn't tear it down. Well, mm -hmm. stop and listen to me for a second. <laughs> um, so it does have its funding from FEMA. Uh, there are four, five properties at FEMA, four came back with funding already. One went in a little later. Um, no. 
Five of them. So five. We have six. Sorry. Um, okay, so the appraisal and the work is being scheduled by the state of Vermont. Um, the <coughs> NRCS um, Emergency Watershed Program um, was looking at another property on that street and saw this and said, you know, we could probably put this in the program to protect Brush Street and your pipes and the rest of it. So we don't have the list from back from them yet, but I'm hoping that this will be in there to protect, to further protect what we have for infrastructure there. Um, this would be part of another um, a scoping study that I'm going to talk about a little bit later um, on, on number 12. And then it's supposed to be, demol it has to be waited, we have to wait to demolish it until August 1st because um, we weren't able to check for bats in it. <coughs> we were receiving federal money from uh, FEMA to demolish something, you have to check for bats. And because it's unstable, you have to wait until after the breeding season. So this is not coming down so, by human. So, so it's after August 1st right now. Right? I have a plan. But we don't have to find it. To this building. Right. So we don't. So I'm going to check for that. Yeah. Or so it doesn't fall down. Oh, good. That's good. Okay. And the, um, other, the other so part of that property, that garage, <laughs> that goes down with it. Right? Yes. Everything, when, you, when you buy a property, <laughs> everything goes down. So that so when we bought School Street, the building was gone, but there were two um, foundations. They had to leave. Um, okay, so, so there's four additional properties that came back with FEMA funding. There are two on Route 14 South on Cooper Brook. Uh, I've submitted a pre-application to do a hazard mitigation grant to do floodplain restoration, hoping to help the rest of the um, properties that are on Route 14. And then there are two more properties that are down on Sawmill Lane. Um, and again, that there's a um, mitigation grant for across the river and then a possible location to do a larger restoration project and a eventual park, but that's like a five to 10 year. Um, and then there's another property at FEMA waiting funding that would be contiguous with those. So we have a, a section, that Sawmill Lane section, everyone in there has been um, flooded multiple times and they've been asking to be bought out. So, so this that's is the first all, rate. That's uh, eight years, and two out front. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the two out front are not, are, would be 2024. This is 2023 I'm dealing with right now. So these are the first ones that came in. Which are Ainair and? Ainair, Devinger, Maskell are right. the last three. And then the other two would be um, Judkins, who is still, you know, they, they want to see what the, what the appraisal. Is that next to? 14. 14. On 14. So the other two. So Judkins and oh. um, the old Warner place. Yeah, the old Warner's place. Yeah, no, because, okay. the, because it had been raised and it was still getting water inside of it. Mm. So they, actually, they actually moved it. Yeah, yeah they moved it and now yeah. they it. They moved, and it's, 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 I just talked to him yet today. He, he says it, it, it's the whole thing is has disintegrated. Yeah. The water has sort of seeped up into the whole building. Um, but they have their funding back. So we're gonna, you're going to be seeing these purchased and demolished hopefully within the next uh, by spring. I think, that I think you said this, but where it says possible location of floodplain restoration project in Ventral Park, that's across the river. No, that one's the sawmill. There's two sides sawmill. to that. The, I mean, you have your, your immediate, the one we've asked for and, and has river, and I'll go into that. Okay. It's the one across the river, um, not on the sawmill lane side. Right. The sawmill lane side, um, because there's multiples who have asked to be bought out in there, <coughs> eventually you're gonna, there's going to be a large section there. Mm -hmm. And um, if you go down to Northfield, they have Dog, Dog River Park. Yeah, yeah. It was it's a successful floodplain restoration. Very successful, yeah. and um, the Caledonia County NRCS, Emily Finnegan, the woman you met, for, mm -hmm. um, is willing to take it on, find the funding, and is excited about it. Great. But this is, it's something we can't start yet because we don't right. own the properties yeah, and yeah. they're all in flux. But it's an eventual project. Yeah. And I will tell you that when talking to people who live in the Granite Street Historic District, that's the project that really excites them because it really could help with their flooding because it would, it's so close Just to where, yeah, because it's where Cooper and, and Lemoyle mm -hmm. come in. Mm -hmm. so we're trying to think of this holistically for the yeah. whole time, mm -hmm. not yep. um, David. Mm -hmm. um, 
So that takes us to Granite Strait. Historic District, I have a pre-application in for a, a Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities Grant for that area, including um, Atkins, Cooper Brook, that whole area. Um, this is the sort of thing that would work well with the community. It also might help with um, accessing other grants. There were minor changes that were identified by the residents that have been implemented, which is they are ecstatic. Thank you, Danny, for working with Atkins on that, that piece in there. Um, it, just a few inches elevation becomes a, becomes a berm in the middle of floods, and Dave was able to bring it down to road elevation. Um, they, Atkins Field is really interested in looking at floodplain restoration on, at Atkins Field because the gardens are probably going to be moving elsewhere at some point because they've been destroyed two years in a row. <coughs> and so instead of creating community through gardening and plantings, maybe creating community through floodplain resilience. It's, it's great. Um, there are about 10 plus houses who will be floodproof. That is one of those things that is kind of elusive, but I'm working on it. Um, the road crew restored the stormwater garden over on Cottage Street, and I've had so many comments on that. Thank you so much, Mom um, and crew. Um, those are tiny things, but it's a, it's a starting point. You know, Sometimes when we don't have the money to start things, we need to do the smaller things that we can. So, um, the next one is floodplain elevations. We had several people who requested. We just received a pre-award letter from the state of Vermont for 700,000. We're one of five towns in the state of Vermont. For 700,000. For, for what are? Elevations. Oh, so ele for residents. Residents. Ele 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 okay, mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. We don't know all the particulars. We don't, we're still gathering who's gonna, how it's gonna work and who's going to be eligible. So that would be what, so, so what's Steve for eligible? Yes. Elevated property, yep. so it's out of the yep. highway. Yep, yep. That's so the one uh, 14 South that worked. Yeah, but yep. you see all the, you yep. did it right yep. after the flood. Yeah, yeah, yep. all the yep. yeah. So this is, I don't have who it, it is yet. You'll get more information as we get more information. But we were one of five towns identified in the state of Vermont as needing something along this line. It was targeted for elevations. It wasn't, I didn't, it's not as though I could have, say, I am going to ask them if we can do flood proofing with it. <laughs> but, it's, um, similar. it's similar. It's similar. I can see where the ele floodplain elevations, to me, seems to be a, not necessarily a really good answer. Because if they're elevate, if it's in a floodplain and they're elevating their property, we know that it's causing water to be displaced somewhere else. And exactly. You don't always, Nature doesn't always put things where you plan on going, so there must be a fair amount of risk to that. I mean, certainly what Steve did is going to affect where the, the old water property. Yeah. You know, and now that actually affects the dragon property. Dragon so, is also elevated already. But um, you know what I'm saying. I do know what you're saying. So you get this. So, so this is must be tricky part of it is engineering you know. and looking at how it's going to impact everyone around you. Um, yes, elevations do impact other people. Because um, that's what everybody says. Well, I'll just raise my land. Well, well you know, yeah, we're trying. We're also trying to keep. I mean, we have people who have asked to be bought out, and that's worked wonderfully. But then other people who do not want to be bought out. So we're trying to work with everybody. But um, this was a not. We didn't put an application or anything. It just. It was one of the. It was an allocation from the state. So. Well, there was some whining on our end. <laughs> well, I have mine a few times, just a few times. Yeah. I'm a little tenacious. <laughs> um, this is a, there is an Economic Development Administration Grant, EDA, um, that is going to be doing flood modeling for the Lamoille River and Cooper Brook, which is great. They already have the money. The work is going to be done by the end of December 2025. <coughs> The exciting thing with this is that not only will we get the flood modeling, which we need for all these other projects, it's changed with all these floods, but also we will be getting um, three to five possible mitigation projects could be created. For example, if we wanted to look at East Hardwick's bridge that goes over and seeing if it, if it, a different size would be better, et cetera. I mean, there's, there's things that can happen. Um, it's working with, we don't have a lot of complete control over it. It's working with NBDA. They get the final word on this. But um, I'm going to be, I've already been part of this from the Lamoille County
planning commission side, so I'm going to stay with it. The other part of this money is economic development in the floodplain. Um, still working with NBDA to find out what that um, entails, but um, hopefully that's going to mean maybe some help for floodproofing for some of the businesses that are already down there. So river modeling, so that's what, what that's going to tell us is like just um, when you head up 14th South, you can see where the gravel in the mm -hmm. river is yep. literally eight feet higher than yep. it used to be. Yep. So that'll tell us that. Yep. Because they'll be and able to go back to their old models say it was elevation was such and such. Yep. So we'll get information on that, which actually could be utilized if we wanted to um, look at dredging in the future or if we wanted to. They also can do um, better. Uh, base flood elevations for us in our Grant Street Historic District because there's a little bit of a discrepancy with the new maps. Um, I don't think they're right, but I also don't have 200000 to hire someone to do it. They can take a look at that and see as part of their work. Um, I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. That's something I've asked for. Um, it's, it's exciting because it's money that's already been coming in and it's going to give another grant base layer for us. Um, Christian, for that? Um, study also make recommendations? It can, yes. Okay. Yeah. Actually, what they asked for for a deliverable with this was the, um, do you remember the, the seven page paper, um, report I gave you guys mm -hmm. a while ago, which you're going to get a new version of? That They took that report and they gave it, they put it out with the bits and said, this is what we want you to create for each of our tabs on the line. So <coughs> we're ahead of the game. How's that? Kristen, is there a coordinate, and this is not this, what I'm about to ask you is not your job, so if you don't have an answer, I totally understand. But um, is there is the state coordinating these efforts from town to town? No. Because this is something yeah. I'm. So other like, towns don't have all this. Well, no, no that's, that's not even really my question. My question is, the armoring and the changes that are made upstream and downstream affect each community yes. differently. Yep. So, like the work that the state just did in East Hardwick. <laughs> Is, I'm not a water, I'm not an engineer, so, but yeah. <coughs> it's going to have an effect on us and then it's going to have an effect on more small than jobs and then all the way to Champlain. So um, I think it's amazing what Hardwick is doing. So there's, to your knowledge, there's not like a... No, there isn't. Okay. So basically it usually well, goes by your... There's certainly, a, there's some coordination. The planning commissions in some of the areas are stepping up and taking on a lot of this stuff. Well, I, I know NDDA so, is doing a lot, but NDDA only goes so far yeah, in Lamoille. So, so, so Lamoille, the Lamoille River yeah. is broken up into three three basins. Yeah. You have your middle that goes to Jackson Dam in Hardwick, okay. and that's covered by the Lamoille County Planning Commission. Your upper is covered by NBDA, and it goes from Jackson up to the <coughs> headwaters in Greensboro. So they only have a tiny section. Um, NVDA has seven tactical basins in their, in their coverage, mm -hmm. two of which are completely in theirs. So those are the ones they're focused on because mm -hmm. that's, they have seven. Yeah. Lamona County has one. They, they have understood that things that happen upstream impact downstream, which is why they invited me to come and start coming to their meetings and they included in this grant harder. Yeah. But, for example, the grant spell specified that it was only going to go to Jackson Dam. I've asked them to go to the edge of Hardwick because we've got a few more projects we could look at. And um, <coughs> hopefully they will. And, and adding Cooper in is above Jackson. But it's, it's hard because they, everyone, the way that it's supposed to work is your RPC gets, is supposed to put together, um, work together with everybody to know what's going on. We have two RPCs on the same river. There's two tactical basins. There's two clean water people, etc. cetera. Um, so we're trying to navigate that. Um, as far as like anything the state does, the, anything VTrans does that doesn't get reviewed by the river port or the river engineers that I work with. Um, in fact, when that project was bid out, I didn't even know it was happening and my river engineer didn't know it was happening. Um, so they are not, <coughs> Um, that's not part of their equation. They're trying to protect their infrastructure. The state is still very much in triage mode right, right. Mm -hmm. from these last two summers of flooding like, and the other events that they've experienced in between, like the one over in St. John's Barry mm -hmm. area, and they're also still experiencing mass exodus. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. 
So, so the Department of Environmental Conservation does not exist anymore? Well, no. DEC? No, no, no. The state. no, no. So, so DEC doesn't do any of the ones for yeah, it, um, V-Trans, uh, it's all their own. But V-Trans is, is still just doing their own thing, and they're not they're letting the ANR know about it anymore. So they're, yeah. they're, they can't figure out how to operate. Okay, that, that's that, always ex been that explains like randomly seeing excavators in the river when you start. Yeah, yeah. Back there. and scooters yeah. and tractors and yeah. everything else yeah. down here. Yeah, even yeah. a bigger mess than they made. Yeah. yeah. It's just a part, right, and I know this like there's nothing we can necessarily control about this, but it's a, no. certainly a frustration of having understanding, needing the triage, or needing to have you know keep roads safe, keep people safe, mm -hmm. but then also this those are going to directly affect our Mm -hmm. Which is why I'm scrambling to, to do some floodplain restoration yeah. and hopefully help us. Yeah, but, it's, so, but unfortunately that's kind of what you're saying is part of the problem. Mm -hmm. It's because we're doing stuff that's going to affect other people down the river. Actually, the, so. the restoration projects, we don't have almost any armoring projects. Except for right, so I'm not, a, I understand, I don't. We've, we're just trying to stay away yeah, from armor. But armor, so I don't want you to stay away from armor. No, we, well, we have to armor in the I'm not an anti-armor guy, I'm an armor guy, just so you know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't lose infrastructure for the sake of letting them wash downstream, I armor it. And right. I understand floodplains as well, um, but what I, I don't, I'm just having a hard time believing that, that the, the state of Vermont does, isn't keeping track of these projects as a whole. Yeah. They are. Vermont Emergency Management is. They're keeping track they of can. it, but they're not keeping track yeah. of what so happens. They're, they're relying and on I'm not the saying, None of this is negative, but no, I'm no, just no, saying, no. in the grand scheme of things, <coughs> if, if projects affect other areas and we're the leader in the projects, <laughs> we're contributing to a lot of other people's problems, right? Or changes. Or changes, yeah. Changes, changes over with that. But yeah. I'm just saying, is, Yep. I don't know if that the assumption that coordination, be coordination through the state of Vermont when you're in Vermont's they're, water they're, was So huge. one of the things they're talking about, Danny, is looking at it from a regional point of view or a watershed point of view. I have weighed in and said I think a watershed point of view would be great. Yep. Personally, I mean, that's just my own. I didn't speak for the town of Hardwick. I said, you know, from no, experiencing and, I, and seeing I get that. a watershed Approach well, that'd be the, that if you're going to break it down, then that would be the way to do it. Obviously. And that is that is why the state has is going to do river corridor rules eventually along right. from the state because it, every town. Is I mean, different. I think the bottom line is, is everybody's behind the eight ball because. Yep. Yeah. There is a, there's there's behind. something that happened in Greensboro that has impacted properties in Hardwick harshly, mm -hmm. and you know I can't do anything about that. I went and helped them do their their bylaws. Hopefully yeah. they'll. No, we're and it's just into speed. We're doing the best we can. Yeah. But we're looking, and that's why we're looking at floodplain restoration and floodplain mitigation versus just buying, just armoring. Right. And I think, in like, the grand scheme, hopefully, we'll become more flood resilient. Yeah. I think we're doing. We, we, you all are doing exactly the right thing. I just always think about how, mm -hmm. like, we're putting in a lot of time and effort to do it right, and then we're also seeing it. Just being just being mandated, yeah. and that is really hard to you know, and that makes sense. But and it's just and because doing, it's water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really tricky, and yes. so it's just we're yeah. doing the best we can. There is a project that is in could be in in Hardwick that would benefit Holcat. I matched the River Conservancy people with the people, person who would help do that. So you know, I mean. It's it's being cognizant of it. I think if we keep being cognizant of it, yeah. you don't like the time, do you, Danny? Um, okay, so resilient. Next one. Being, okay, we're on twelve, and there's thirteen. Okay, so River is the resilience initiative for Vermont empowerment and recovery. It was funding um, that was obtained by the Two Rivers Regional Planning Commission, and um, it targeted certain towns. Hardwick was one of them. Um, basically, they are they retained a engineering and consulting firm, Stantec. You guys heard from them. They came and talked to you and said, "We're going to be helping you with something." Well, the something is going to be um, three projects. One, the Mill Street above <coughs> town. Um, the second is going to be lower um, what you see across the river there, where HED, I believe, is the official owner. But that's the town is the official. The town. Owner. Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a floodplain restoration project that has been identified in multiple studies of the river. Um, and the hope is that because it's just below where Cooper is, it will help 
with floodplain mitigation. And then the final would be the scoping study for protecting and restoring the Lemoyne River from Hayes, approximately Hayes to Cottage, because we have we might have FEMA funds and EWP funds and the rest of it, but we really need to know what needs to happen in there. So scoping the whole thing so we don't inadvertently have one person hurting another person. So kind of on the micro scale of what you're talking about, Kaylee. Um, and we just heard this morning that those are the three they're going to focus Great. on. Um, to give you an idea, Kaylee, we were talking about all the armoring we need to do in downtown Hardwick. They came up with a $2.5 million price tag to do that. So the seems scoping crazy. study would be the first. Which is well. Yeah, that seems actually like not that crazy. Yeah. Um, just some additional information for you guys. Thank you so much for um, facilitating the bylaws update for floodplain. Um, uh, it, was, it went really well, and, I'm, and we're the only town ready for the updated FEMA maps. Um, and actually was able to, you'll see the implications with um, the pre presentation on the wastewater treatment facility. Um, about the FEMA maps, they are still in early working draft, which means I can't release them. But I have been letting people know that they should think about flood insurance maybe if they go forward as the way they're written. Um, they'll be ready in about a year or two. And then everyone who is impacted will get a personal note, like a, a letter from me saying this is what's going to happen, come talk to me, etc. Um, we will we'll show you the maps for a nominal price. No, <laughs> once I can show them to people, I'm going to put them everywhere. Um, the local emergency management plan is under review and we're looking at making it more accessible. And at the same time, Neighbor to Neighbor is working with consultants that were hired by Vermont Council for Rural Development to create a citizen version of Hardwick's local emergency plan. So helping with communications, embedding a, a volunteer, for example, in with uh, the town so that we can get communications that are smooth and and help us out, and the supply and support center, emergency shelter, uh, volunteers, etc. So they're expecting a draft in early 2025, and they'll be inviting everyone in the community to come out and, and hear about it and to volunteer their time maybe in the future emergency. So that's just your heads up. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much, Kristen. Thank you. I'm coming back. I'm on another time. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate the, even though it's high level, it's actually fairly detailed. Well, there's detailed. more stuff, yeah. but that's that's your basic for now. So we need it out. Thank you. Great. Um, next up, we have item one, select board to review and approve a liquor tobacco licenses for M and M beverage. Um, is here. I make a motion that we approve the. Second class license for NU Beverage Student Businesses M and M Beverage and a tobacco license and a tobacco substitute endorsement for the same. Do we have a second? Can I second that? Uh, any questions? <coughs> the time is noted that the renewals and the infractions. Uh, all in favor of approving those licenses, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion Ooh. carries, thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, next, uh, we have Jason here from Alder Schnellia to talk to us about the report on the wastewater treatment facility, which, <laughs> as Danny noted previously, is 176 pages. And <laughs> Danny, yeah, I know it's through page by page. No, no, no <laughs> I, I did that already. You did. Very fast. Well, we're trying to <laughs> But I did read the apart pages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I like those long stories I have on one page. Yeah. Cliff <laughs> note. Um, so I, I just want to kind of get the high points. I think everybody's familiar with um, the plant enough and what's happened there over the past year plus um, and during two 500 year floods um, and, and wiping out the plant, plant essentially. So. <clears throat> We've been working on this for about a year now, a um, little under a year. And the, the overall goal here is to provide this report um, looking at essentially three alternatives for the wastewater treatment facility um, so that FEMA can do a cost benefit analysis and determine whether um, they can offer uh, funding for plant re either rehabilitation essentially or replacement. Um, and so I just want to talk through a couple of those, those alternatives. Um, so in both of the floods that happened almost to the day, a year apart, July 2023, July 2024, 
um, the flood waters exceeded the 500 year flood elevation um, at the plant. Um, the first flood in 23, we were under construction doing an upgrade. It, uh, we lost not only uh, existing infrastructure, but also brand new infrastructure that had already been installed by the project. Um, luckily, we had a contractor on site and were able to react pretty quickly to get a lot of that stuff repaired. We thought we were in good shape, and then a year later, it happened again, and we lost all of the new equipment and the old equipment that was repaired. Um, fortunately, things are running again. Uh, in the evaluation, um, so there's a couple key points. Um, looking at what the design flood elevation is for the project, there's a couple of different ways to evaluate this, and one is base flood elevation plus three or one foot above the 500 year flood elevation. Um, in looking at, at that evaluation, the base flood elevation plus three feet governs for that particular site. Um, so that means, and this doesn't really give you much context in, in and of itself, but the base flood elevation or the design flood elevation is 800, 805.3 feet um, at that site. Um, so to put that into context, the finished floor of the control building, which is essentially at grade down there, is at elevation um, 797. So you're 7.25 feet below what your design elevation is actually supposed to be. And that's about what the flood elevation, flood levels were down there at the plant. Um, so uh, going a little bit further and, and tagging on a little bit to what Kristen had indicated, um, with the local <coughs> Uh, um, flood bylaws, that's critical infrastructure, and it actually can't be replaced. So in, in that in that location. So essentially, it needs, something needs to be done. It either needs to be raised or it needs to be relocated. Um, yeah. Yes. Just want to make sure. <laughs> um, it can be. Yes. Yes. Can be right. 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 So that so. What we looked at in this evaluation is bringing the plant back to pre-disaster condition. And that's, ba that's a baseline condition that FEMA needs to look at to do their um, overall life cycle cost and determine what they can offer you to do the next phase, which would be either alternative two, which is codes and standards, which is bringing the plant up to codes and standards, we'll talk about that in a second, or complete relocation. Um, roughly, um, the pre-disaster condition is about a million, a little over a million dollars, 1.1 million, 1.1 million to bring the plant back to pre-disaster conditions. That is not totally what you've spent on the pre-disaster condition currently to get things back up and running. It includes a couple of items that would need to be done that just weren't done because it wasn't feasible. Uh, but we're able to incorporate those in the pre-disaster condition for an evaluation later on. Under the current codes and standards, um, that alternative looks at basically demolishing the plant in place down to the existing slab, leaving the in-plant pump station, which is in the basement, um, building uh, floodproof, dry flood proofing above the influent pump, pump station and the headworks that's currently exterior to the building. So dry flood proofing that area having another dry flood proof section with a flow through path in between at floor level, and then moving the electronics, the control, um, the, the, uh, the office, the lab, and the blowers up to the second floor. So basically where the roof is now would be where all of the critical infrastructure is for the wastewater plant with an access off to the lagoon, basically lagoon number one on the back side. Um, the, the phosphorus uh, chemical building, um, if you're familiar with the plant and you're looking from Woka Street down, that's the small building that's up on the left-hand side, that's above your design flood elevation. The lagoons are above your design flood elevation. So those are, so that's a, sort of the safe zone for the wastewater plant. Um, so the codes and standards, again, bringing everything up to basically roof elevation. Um, that, <laughs> that alternative, in our review, total project cost that we're projecting out to um, uh, 2027 uh, is about $8.4 million to do that effort at the plant. 
Um, the complete facility relocation would look at demolishing, essentially demolishing the entire existing plant. Um, chlorine contact tank, which would be demolished, the plant in and of itself, the building would be demolished. Um, the a new wastewater treatment facility would be constructed in one of the lagoons. Um, and then the other lagoon, once the new plant is up and running, would be, there's options, but the, the ideal situation would be to return that back to, to uh, you know, restore that back to floodplain. Um, so you'd have essentially one lagoon, which is over an acre. I can't remember the exact um, uh, size of, of each acre. Um, but you'd have that return back to floodplain. Um, that alternative, again, we're projecting out. This one's a little bit further out to 2027. Um, that's a big one. That's at about $21 million for that alternative. Um, <coughs> what that incorporates also is the demolition of each of the lagoons and right. restorations. It's going to cost us $3 million dollars to take out the lagoons There's and we a, just barely paid $7 million for <coughs> that. That's right. There's a significant effort to demolish those lagoons. So that we're changing the type of plant at that process. You would be at that point. The it process is a different process. process. Yeah. So, so not necessarily incorporated in this report, but what is a tremendous benefit for you as a community right now, your plant had, you for the past 10 or so, <coughs> maybe more years, the loadings into that plant are very high. The BOD, the biochemical yeah. oxygen band loadings are very high coming into that plant. Um, and so you're tight on capacity for expansion. Yeah. Um, and that's always been an issue. And, and there's been mitigation. You've been able to control it. Um, some of that has to do, I think, and not, not anything bad or right or wrong. It has to do with what's coming in, I think, partially yeah. from the industrial park um, and other large users, um, which is, is OK. But it constrains you on what you can do there with the type of lagoon plant that you have. Um, with, with a replacement and a change of system, you have way more flexibility and the ability to control and treat that higher loading um, much better. Um, that's not necessarily saying that you, you know, that doesn't, that's not a, a total deciding factor for you to go that route. No, but but when you say a change of, of, of treatment process, yes, it does also provide you more flexibility. Yeah, which, so at least three of us have been around for quite a while. So we, yeah. have, we understand that we're, we've had issues before with the thoughts of more capacity and yeah. having to require people to do pre-treatment exactly. and things of that nature. Right. So the future is not, Capacity-wise, is not very bright. It's so not with our existing program. And not to mention new um, testing, which we always knew, but we we were fixing what we had because we couldn't afford on our own dime That's to, to change. So, uh, what I'm hearing, and I don't know if I should say it out loud, is this may be an opportunity for us to lessen the blow to our ratepayers to, to go with a uh, a system that will be ultimately much better for the future right? flexibility long term yeah, yeah. So so something that will have to be done anyway at some point if we expect to grow especially when sludge is getting harder and harder to uh right. is, that's the other thing getting rid of the sludge is sludge is killer we already know we just dealt with that we just I mean, with well, that would be a good a good number to add on so if we went so with eight, Eight million option, right? But then had to we do still got to have five million every yes. every three years to get rid of sludge. Right. Or honestly, I guess there will always be a place to get rid of it, but it's getting we know how difficult well, that might is. Not they, always there, get there is, but that's getting harder and harder. That's that's the issue that we ran into with the treatment plant upgrade we just did was disposal. Yeah, you can't, right. get, you can't get rid of it. Oh, yeah, we're well, well aware yeah. of that, um, <laughs> and that was that was the killer, you know. So, we're that was a quick overview. I burned through things pretty quick. Certainly happy to answer questions, but not really. We're not looking. There's no. There's no decisions to make. We're not. There's no. You know. Yes, we want to go with this alternative or this alternative. This has been finalized, and it has to go to FEMA now. And they do their analysis, and they basically are going to come back to you with an offer, and then that offer is going to be something, some number of dollars that's gonna help you make a decision about what path yeah. you wanna go down. 
in addition to that, there's a potential for additional funding from the state to go on top of that, which I, I can't say what that is. We don't, they don't even know right. what that is. But so this is really just an exercise so that you can get an offer from FEMA. It's not a decision making point for you at this, at this time. Um, I think that in our, in our analysis, initially when we were going through this, we felt like that alternative number two, the codes and standards, was the best bet for your plan until the second flood happened. And then we were like, why are we all looking at this again? Because it's going to happen again. So I don't know, we can't deny it's going to happen again. That's the whole issue now. Question. So yes. um, you just, I think, just said that going with the, um, the Pass Reactor. So um, much of Pass Reactor. The relocation. The relocation yeah. that provides more flexibility for increased um, nutrient load. Yeah, that's right. Growth. But I thought in the report it said that you were designing the same levels. So it'd be the same. You can you can increase capacity. So what we had to look at in this report was replacement in kind. Yeah. Um, but what the what the, the plant essentially in here is the same capacity as you have now. So yeah. 341 gallons a day or something like that. 371. 371 gallons a day. But with the SBR, you have much more operational flexibility to handle higher loadings. So even at the same even at the same. Um, Right. So with the same uh, physical infrastructure, you could change your process to do more? You, or you, yes, you have more okay. flexibility. Yep. Okay. And then my, my second question was, um, I understand, you know, this is for FEMA, but when it does come around to town decisions, and if we are deciding between yes. uh, options two and three, um, changing the um, process, um, I assume change is the operating expense. And, it would. And how do we, is there a point at which we model that? Yes, absolutely. It, it, and so um, once there's an alternative, once we get sort of an offer and we have more information, we're going to have to figure out where this sits with the state. Um, <clears throat> if there's state funding and funding involved, we're going to have to do a, a little bit of a deeper um, analysis, alternatives analysis for them, for their approval um, on each one of these alternatives. <clears throat> at that point, we can, we would have to look at for them what the OM cost would be. Um, if, if that, if they're not going to require that for this particular process, we're not really sure how this is going to play out. I'm not sure if it's going to go down a traditional state revolving loan fund path like we did with the wastewater plant upgrade we just went through. Things could be a little bit different with this process with FEMA involved, and even if the state has some funding, it could be quicker, mm -hmm. could be simpler to some degree. Um, we can still do an evaluation for you to make a decision on which avenue you want to go down um, before you make that that, that ultimate call. Yeah. I mean, definitely the idea of um, getting rid of loop number one and lowering that, and then potentially um, working with the Trans Rail Division to get an underpass under the rail trail, you could definitely envision how that would really help and yeah. mm -hmm. all, all, all those businesses right down there. It would, mm -hmm. it would just be, yeah. you, you open up a lot of floodplain space right there. Yeah. It's, a, it's a benefit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, specifically this on Blackbridge as well, over on the other yeah. side, it would be a huge change, game yeah. changer for flooding. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and, and I'm, you know, it's a great report. Yeah. Did uh, yeah. Did so it, is it, it it's, got, it's off to FEMA or it's going off to FEMA? It's gone. Um, so the three, so, so, so Johnson, Ludlow, and Hardwick are all being kind of stumped by a consult, a state consult. Yep. And to they, FEMA, they have it. They're bringing it to FEMA. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how long it's going to take. Could be. Could be till the yeah, end. Yeah. I mean, there's some other things sure. going on right now. So there has been a local. Uh, the, the, FEMA, the FEMA representative that's reviewing these and going to be doing the cost analysis is a former UVM hydraulics professor. Um, he lives over in, in uh, near some, just south of St. Johnsbury. He's been around for years, um, and we know him pretty well. Uh, Richard Downer, 
So we'll, we'll be in touch with him working through that analysis um, to, to go through that with him. I'm sure he's going to have questions on it. Uh, but he's already been assigned to it, which bodes well for it moving forward, mm -hmm. hopefully. Um, but I don't know that we really have a good timeline on it. Dave, you might know more than I do. Yeah. Well, we've done it, right? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we'll have an update point. on that in the next couple of weeks. <clears throat> yeah. So one other thing that I think can really accelerate the time frame for this um, once we get an offer from FEMA is they and the state are both on board with a design build instead oh. of a design bid build. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that would be that's easy. a huge benefit mm -hmm. time-wise. And that's how we based the cost was on a design build, not a design bid build. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's a that's a huge time saver mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Uh, and so that's been okayed by FEMA and the state uh, to be able to do that with these particular projects. That would, that would be huge. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, even if it's codes and standards or yeah. replacement, either way, huge, huge time savings. Yeah. God, I think with all the talk of resiliency and everything else that they would want us to move it into the future. We would think, as previously discussed, they're not even looking at the whole oil river. Right. So, right. So, <laughs> right. It's, yeah. You go. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Yeah. I really appreciate it. And the the. Detail on the report is really good. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, if anything comes up, if you have any other questions, let me know. Oh, okay. Great. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll ask off point. What happened in the fall of 2022? <laughs> what was that? In the fall of 2022, there's a big spike in uh, BOD. Yeah. I'll talk to you about later. <laughs> we don't need to do it during. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You didn't read it? Yeah, about the graphs. Yeah, we're talking about the stuff we read. We did. <laughs> I think that's when we transferred over to one book. Hey, thanks for coming, Ken. I wonder. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder. Thank you. But there's also some graphs. Anyway. All right. Um, a lot of that had to do with the street bike lane. We discussed the last yeah. three <laughs> meetings. <laughs> Deb? I don't want to do the alien. You want to pay six thousand dollars for for the paint on the on the? Uh, oh my God! This one again. Hey, you guys asked for it. Caller, sure. I don't. I don't want sixteen hundred. So to be clear, it says just white line. So, but this is a. This is the width that what you asked for. Though. Three feet or whatever. Yeah. Is it striped? Mm -hmm. It is striped. Yes. Cross hatched. Cross hatched. And it's. Um, as you can see, $6,875,000. Um, Opie and I also talked about um, the flexible round post. Um, we just found one online um, that is able to screw into the <coughs> ground, um, just to give you guys an estimate. Um, and we kind of estimated um, 39 of those posts every 50 feet. Um, and so we would be ordering um, 39 at $41 a piece, um, which equals to $1,599. Um, he and I talked about um, doing those posts. We've also talked about doing those posts and still painting a um, white line, um, just for even more of a buffer. Um, so we have more options, um, but I think the, I mean, I think the flexible post probably will be cheaper and might even be safer for the kids, but at least we've got the quotes from um, this company, different different quotes from the last few meetings, and so it, we have <coughs> options and, for that section. And I don't know about the posts in the winter. That's the only thing. Well, I, I absolutely know about them. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I know where they are. I, 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 I know where they are. I know where they're going to be. I mean, yeah. But it's just a thought. Yeah. To, to delineate, but we're trying, we're coming up with all the mm -hmm. potential possibilities here and feeding it to you oh. guys. Are these easy? Are these the posts? Can they be taken taken off for the winter? Oh, I would assume they'd be like pretty easy. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to leave them out. Yeah, they'll just yeah. get destroyed. Yeah. Um, um, yes. One of the questions at the last meeting we asked was if we do any of these, where the money is coming from? Do right. we figure that we out? We have to budget. Um, We'd have to budget, budget for the next budget for it. We don't have any budget for this. Okay. Well, we have sidewalk budget. That's 
true. Well, I, I don't mind if we're not going to do anything until mm -hmm. next spring, then we don't need to worry about it right now. But. I agree. Just info. Yeah, it's great info. I mean, we found out it's going to be more difficult, to, it's a difficult subject to deal with, mm -hmm. what we determined. What we really need is a real sidewalk. We just spent 21 million. I know, but it works. Okay. Well, no, I'm just saying. We got it. Yeah. I mean, it's, no, it's, it's not a real sidewalk would be ideal. But, yeah. but still, we've come up with it's not a, there's not a cheap, easy fix. Zero. So we, knowing this, we can add something <coughs> in for next year's budget. Is that what you're saying? Well, or do something we spring? Were, we'll consider yeah, it. At this point, I think we need to have a budget line item for South Main Street yeah. <coughs> with an action item to be done in next year's budget that's going to have to be more than $5,000. Or have we done a transportation alternative grant for that stretch of road ever, do you know? I don't know. It's class one, so I don't know whether you'd be able to get, get well, one. Well, we just got one for Mill Street. Did so, you? so we could put in another application for a transportation alternative grant near next year. So that's the way to do it. So yeah, that's the best way to do it. Yeah. And then, and we may, and, and when we get done with item number four, we may think we need to decide which which road we're doing our well, let's get there. for first. Well, we're doing it first. I wasn't trying to do that. <laughs> no, I know you're not. This is just information to you guys. You no, guys make that's all good. It's all good. And then we, so when we did the so South Main Street project, incrementally, we, in my opinion, before we move up from yeah. this one, is we need to, if we're going to do something, to be productive. And we could do that on, on a much cheaper dime, is to come up with a genuine plan. Yeah. To do what we're going to do. Are we going, you know, and, and so at least at that point, we can get small grants over five years to do work our way towards Jenny Road. Yeah. So at least if we do the United Church intersection, do one section of sidewalk with a crosswalk, with you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we're, we can't do any of that until we have some sort of plan in how we're going to make those crosswalks work. And how, what kind of sidewalk are we going to have on the left-hand side? I mean, that's got to be dealt with it. Painting a white line for one year is not going to resolve any of this. It's going to help, but it's not. We're still lacking a South Main Street plan for pedestrian use. I, I legit ADA approved right. drawings. You know that's something that needs to be done in order for us. At that point, we can say, well, mm -hmm. now we'll do the, this project this year. We'll do this project this year. But at least we we know what. A, B, and C is, and right now we don't. We just know that we're not anywhere near. So right now we're doing a. a um, I'm a hate planning. I'm an anti-planning guy. You know. But it does help. You're over there talking about it. I My know. God. I can't even believe it. So I must get it. So we're head. doing it on Mill Street right now, right? So we have a project underway at Mill Street right now for the same. The same stuff. Same stuff. Yeah. And so. I'm thinking what we need to do is we need to get a plan together to where we look at. Well, I think that's something we can do, right? Yeah. That's something we should be doing as a We should be doing is we should say, let's, Mill Street's going when that, when that is planned, and, and that's moving forward, then the next thing to plan is either South Main or perhaps Wilkes Street. Well, it doesn't matter because it all needs it. Exactly. But we need to start being due diligence yes. about Get this, these things. And, and this stuff needs to be in the capital plan. And <coughs> so yep. That's something that I want to work on. Yep. And we're something we're going to work on when we can get out of this flood recovery stuff. Yep. Yep. Can we basically just replicate what we have for our paving plan and use it for sidewalks? Sure. So that yeah. way, it just works really well to be like, okay, we know we're doing Cedar Street, whatever. Yeah. Except that it's pretty basic. Ex well, except that for. I think it's a little different because well, yeah, paving, paving is our own easy. money well, and right right the roads. I'm just saying concept-wise, like this is number one safety priority. This is number two, three, four, whatever. Like putting it all on paper, putting it all on paper, so we know. But we need actual have. designs because yeah. the, the, right. the infrastructure we right. have needs to be changed. Yeah. It, keep track of it. It's very simple. Yeah. It's, it's and, just a tracking thing. Kristen. And, and with all of them, you have to look at stormwater too. Right. right. Stormwater yeah. changes. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, everything, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's I think a good example, uh, something to pay attention to, 
is the what's going on in East Hardwick right now, better connection stuff, because they're developing a plan to make the conditions better up there. They're going to get a stormwater system design out of that, and we'll see the next phase of that, the implementation of that plan. So that's that's a prime example of what needs to happen in snapshots all over town. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's through a better connection plan. That's particular. That's one. Yeah. 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 Yeah, great. So I think we should roll right into item four. Kristen's going to talk Which about your, I'm just, problems on. And I well, also, I'm not. I wasn't planning to talk about it. I would also um, say that if you can attend one of those better connection community meetings, I think it's important. I I attended I one. I think Kaylee was yeah. at the local one I attended. It's good to show up and see what it's all about. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was going to find out about them. The email list. Oh boy. <laughs> well, they we could be told. I mean, yeah, we'll let you know. Basically, okay. send yeah. out a yeah. thing to the select board when they are. And they're, and they're, they're out there. Here, yeah, just send it to oh, the whole select board. board. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. I'm not. All right. So. So what I, I will remind you guys, all of these programs have started with one of these walk audits. We've been able to take the walk audit and use it to leverage getting funding to do the transportation alternatives, better connections, etc. So this is a this is a something that you're having done by volunteers that's becoming the first step to going forward. So it would be great to see it happening on South Main Street Wolf infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So some people walk on Wolf Street. Yes, Wolf so Street. Some people from the planning commission. Yes, <laughs> so people from the planning commission. Well, and, and we, it started with some complaints, which is how South Main Street started as well. Yes. People sent complaints to the town manager's office. The town manager's office asked if the planning commission could look at uh, the street, at the sidewalk. Um, I'm not going to go through this piece by piece, but I will point out to you, as anyone who has walked on Woolcott would know, that there's a section between Elm Street and Main Street that is, um, we identified it at the end, the planning commission's event identified it in, as the section identified between Elm Street and Main Street should be studied and improved as soon as fiscally possible. It is a two and a half foot drop right there. Mm -hmm. And it is not enough space for two people and it's- So I think we all know. Yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> I, I didn't think I needed to go into it. Yeah. This comment doesn't, hopefully doesn't come off really, really bad, but. One of the issues I see is we keep identifying more problems and we're not, we need to. <laughs> so I think what we need you know, to focus on in all this and what's important. Because now is, we've got from South Bay, now Wilk it's a priority all of a sudden. No, 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 I think, no, 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 but I think we just need to start cycling through them, right? And do the same, whatever we're doing on Mill Street or perhaps the better, instead of doing transportation alternatives, maybe we're doing better connection, whatever, we need to do something to get the ball rolling. <laughs> Yeah. For making a plan. And yep. Wilkins Street was, it was a request of, of, of citizens and residents mm -hmm. to look at it. And it was also, it also is where we have a lot of our floodplain. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be looking at, is there are other, other, other issues that when we're looking at flood resiliency should be examined. Mm -hmm. So it's all dovetailed. And, when we're and I know Danny, you Weighing know, all the options were for where resources are. Wilkins Street, a big chunk of it, all the way down to Granite, is in the designated downtown, which gives us an extra point on some of these things mm -hmm. that we want to try to get funding for. South so Street, so no, it helps. Yeah. yeah. An extra point. Yeah. It's hard to, um, the way I look at it is I'm, I'm very protective of the town, okay? So it's hard, you get defensive with the stuff. It's like, oh, there's, there's problems, there's problems, there's problems. But, we need to work towards solutions, and they're, they're not an overnight fix. Like, we're just, it's good that we have volunteers, the planning commission, that'll go out there and look at this stuff, put, put a report together, Kristen helps with that, and then we just, we, we keep moving forward and staying positive. It's, it, these are the conditions on the ground, yep. and they don't change overnight. So it's, it's really easy to get defensive and say, mm -hmm. well, there's no problem, it's been like that forever. We're going to continue to have it be like that. That's not a good attitude to have, or a good mindset for a community. That's speaking from my experience and my and how I look at it. Right, and I think I think what everybody is saying tonight is yeah. let's 
let's figure out how we move forward to right. real long-term solutions yeah. and, and <coughs> put together a... And they're, all, and, they're all tied toge and they're all tied together, which is what makes it mm, that much more yeah. complicated. And just so you guys get a chance to look at it, it is becoming a de facto um, mile yeah. rail trail loop. So that was one of my questions, and I think this is tied tied into the kiosks and the signage. So I texted OP about this, but Greensboro Bend just finished their uh, <coughs> parking and their little park. Yeah. And it's beautiful yeah, it nice. and it's simple and there's an ma actual map that shows you where to go. Mm -hmm. There's zero signage in Hardwick about how to get into town and how to get out of town. And so of course it's de facto because it's downhill. Mm -hmm. So yeah. most people are going to want to go downhill versus going back uphill to the rail trail. But I think that's like, we don't even, I know we've started to put some signage up for parking, but driving into town pretending you don't live here is like, you really don't know where you're going. Um, so I think that is probably the cheapest thing we can do about, I mean, people are going to do whatever they're going to do. They're going to cross the road in the middle of the blinking light to get to front seat, whether we put a crosswalk there or signs or whatever, they're just going to do it. But, um, I just, I just think we have, we have kiosks, we have set, we're going to be getting, we've got those great maps that were already made. Like, it seems like that's a pretty easy thing that we can do to just start reading <coughs> people. It was meant to just be a, a yeah. just a heads up, that is what's happening. Oh yeah, okay. Okay. And it does, I mean, it makes total sense. Oh yeah. When I'm downtown on my bike going that way, I take the road because mm -hmm. that's where I am. I don't bike back up to like that. Yeah. Um, the other piece that you guys got, and um, I'm just going to, I'm not going to run through it, is the Planning Commission is looking at creating a new district, which is the Village Center District. It would be in East Hardwick. Current, currently, East Hardwick is in the same district as Downtown Hardwick. Mm -hmm. And so there are things that could be improved in Downtown Hardwick that would negatively impact East Hardwick because it's a different, it's a completely different area. It doesn't have the, the same shops and commercial that we do in Downtown. But if you make a change at the, in the central business, which is what they currently are, you would be um, you'd be impacting the one in East Hardwick as well. You mean and in the town, in the zoning? In the, the zoning, the zoning district. Yeah. The and the zoning district was created was, was they were assigned to that district because their, a lot of their lots are similar to the lots in downtown Hart. Different use, similar size lots. So instead of trying to Shove jam them into lots that uh, into zoning districts that exist. The Great. recommendation was that we create a new district. It's patterned on um, plans from the state, and it will be. It's in the draft form right now. We're going to be reaching out with individual letters to each member of the of that community as to what they're being because there's three different districts there. So there's three different types of changes that will be occurring. Um, so you got a the proposed map and the proposed district de mm -hmm. description in your packets. Mm -hmm. It's a heads up in case someone says to you, what is this? Mm -hmm. um, and the planning commission will be hosting a public listening, public hearing in December, December 10th, I think, the second Tuesday of the month. Um, so that's Great. heads up. Thank you. You're welcome. Which is also coming out with better connections. So it's all dovetailing together. Great. Uh, I think it'll be easier to sell the village of East Hardwick after this is done. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I don't think you can do that. Um, next is item 5, uh, select board to set a public hearing date for the closeout of the BCBP library grant. KC oh. asked that um, you guys hold the public hearing before the next select board meeting, which is November 7th wow. at either 5.30 or 5.45. 5.45. Could be a 5.45. or I said definitely. Yeah. 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 Or a 5 or 5.55. Yeah. Well, 5.45 as long as there's cookies. As long as there's cookies. <laughs> uh, and that's for the that's big grant they just yeah. got? Or is this for a different one? They've had it for a while. Oh, this is I didn't realize they had to have a public hearing for a closeout of BCP. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. I didn't know we did. We could do it. Good to know. So we may have a yellow bar coming up too, then, right? Mm -hmm. um, next is item six select board to review and approve the contractor's bid for emergency <laughs> watershed protection work. This. Uh, 
Where are these projects? Is it the NRCS? Yeah, I know. Where are they? There are two projects. Uh, Harvey Building Supply Property, Jerome. Yep. And Andy Gilchrist. And it's to stay, just to stabilize the existing, or are they going to give them back some land? Do you know? Just armor. Armor. Yeah. And rerouting the river channel temporarily, pulling some gravel back. Yeah. Making some. <laughs> But they're not trying to reclaim any of the land. It's basically, of any, whatever they're going to do is just get it to work. Yep. Taking down a couple of trees. So, yeah, so the thing is, we aren't paying for it. So no, but we're we're in control. Of right. The that was the deal. We'd do it if we didn't. Just, uh, but the but the homeowner pays a percent. I make a motion. Um, we, uh, that so no. Oh, that the NRCS is paying 100 percent. Oh, okay. That's the <coughs> next group. Oh, okay. Okay. I make a motion that, that we award the um, EWP work to GW Tatro Construction for one hundred thirty-eight thousand five hundred. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? I'm just surprised that the very the variance. So I'm not at all because these guys are just throwing numbers out there now because. They you got get it, you get it. They got plenty of work. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, if you're uh, at the state, that's it's okay. a big problem right now. Okay. <laughs> well, the there's the people that are making a lot is, of money right now. It's very good. It's by this much part of the most good. All right. So we got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Next, uh, select board reports. I have one. Isn't this the second? Hey, I got two reports. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the glass is in the window at the new building. Yeah. Help, help me out anymore. I it's saw the center that. There's no more plywood. Yeah. There's no more plywood yeah. out the window. Your building. It's the Eric Remick building. As it's known to most people, as it's known to most people in Eric. The Eric Remick building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I did see the glasses in there by the other day. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we 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 yeah. yeah. Small things. Uh, no, uh, VASA, the ATV Association, uh, has come to town to I work on truck. Wright Farm Road. Um, I went up today, yesterday, yesterday with David, who's the, the, the guy. Yeah. Um, and she certainly is in rough shape up through there. Mm. So I talked to Opie and what's he doing over there? <laughs> um, Changing perspective. Yeah. And they needed some uh, tailings, some material to put in. Huh? So they're hauling some out of the uh, with their ton truck out of the, we have some the tailings offer? from the uh, sand screening operation. So we had some to offer for market. Yeah, I guess okay. there's plenty up there. All right. And uh, I asked him if maybe the town could haul a couple of loads down, stage them down there for him. Uh, how, okay. Just how, to, how is that? So it looked to me like since the people driving around in the river, yeah, it looked like maybe they'd also driven out on Wright Farm Road. They did. It. And what's the situation? Ah, uh, they made um, a hell of a mess of it. But they made a hell of a mess of everything down there. Okay. I just um, haven't been out so the David day. actually put. So when you go out around there, there's always an issue where it drains, that wetland drains mm -hmm. across right there. So I put tailings, mm -hmm. same, the same material, mm -hmm. in that whole length of the road several years ago. Yeah. Um, so he actually lowered it and put a ford in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We, he was going to put a culvert in, but I asked him not to because the culverts are just another pain in the butt. It's going to. Gonna... <laughs> so now there's a there's a there's a pretty good. David is now we call him Gilder Bars because. He digs deep. He, he, when he leaves the water bar, it's there, and there'll be water bars will be there when he gets done. But um, that's really what it needs right now is to control the water. And then next year, they're gonna. They still have a pending RTP grant. Oh, but they're not um, getting to it till next. They're year. not going to get to it this year just because of the time. And the, there's there's quite a bit of work that needs to be done up there if you're going to do that. So this year, they're just trying to stabilize it. That big tube you sit this yeah. down there yeah. at the bottom of there's one spot where I think I've got a three foot culvert in there now and it just fails oh, every year every year every year every year. Well, that's that pipe has a long history with me. I buried it twice, and 
the last time I buried it over and burned it, I thought I'd get rid of it forever and ever. And lo and behold, it washed out and almost a mile down off the mountain and landed next to Route 5 over there. So they brought it back So yeah, it ended up back here. I can't even believe it's back here. I'm telling you, it's just, it's weird, it's wild. Good thing you put your name on there. I mean, I've, I've moved that thing so many times. And I when I buried, I actually had a party. I celebrated when I buried it and burned it because it was finally gone. Maybe and you should now take it's it back. home. Dude. So David's going to put it up there now. And that it'll, it'll work great. It's a perfect spot for it. I don't believe he's going to get accomplish it because I know how this thing works. It, it's rolled off the trailer twice on me into the opposite ditch from where I wanted it. It's just yeah, it's monster. It's gotta, it's gotta, and it's one of those things where somebody gives you something for free. All metals donated it to to the Vasa at least ten years ago, <laughs> and it's been a, just a logistical nightmare ever since. So that's his that's his problem now. Bottom line is they are taking care of right Farm Road, so. But but most of the project's going to happen next year. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but it will be possible for the snowmobiles, and and you'll be able to at least hike it and bike it and stuff this fall. Oh, okay. Right, but it'll be much better. Yeah. Than it is. And the water will be going not from yeah, the top to the bottom. Yes. Yeah. I mean that's ideally this year all they're doing is controlling the water, stopping the water yeah, from, from, from from more erosion. Right. Okay. Um, and the Hardwick Woodbury Rail Trail had their meeting. There were scheduling problems. I didn't go Wednesday night. <coughs> but uh, as far as that goes, it really doesn't have a whole lot to do with us at this point. They're just trying to get the Woodbury section uh, under control. I did have a thought regarding the Hardwick Woodbury Rail Trail relative to people biking down Wolfitt Street. And yeah. that when you're biking down Wolfitt Street, you could turn right at Solomon Lane on the Hardwick Woodbury Rail Trail and take that around. Yeah. And get on the Mono Valley Rail Trail. There's, there's no reason why that couldn't be a, a decent trail in the summer. Yeah. But <coughs> how would anybody know that? Well, if it were improved, it, you can't. So right now you can't. Signage. Oh, signage. <laughs> right. Yeah. The ATV club. Yeah. So the ATV you know, club is not trail. very active this year, and they didn't. I don't think they can get down through there, can you? No. Yeah. I'm just saying that that's a. Especially when it becomes a bike park. Oh, okay. All right. You ready for another? Yes, please. Yeah. So uh, the townhouse has two more events before we close down for the winter season or the you know off season, we'll call it. Um, the Historical Society has a presentation on Monday night. Um, can't remember the name of the author, but it's about architecture in Vermont and. <coughs> Uh, oh, it's the house. So Thomas, we're here. Thomas, Thomas yeah. Bud, was it Budka? Bud, did, Bud, did, who, did, who, did, who, something. I don't know who. Anyway, if Wiz were here, she would be able to give us all that information. It's on the sign at the townhouse, on the side, mm -hmm. on the opposite side. So when you're coming down Slap Hill, you'll see it. Um, and the other event is on Friday the 25th, and it's the Vermonster Mash being. Um, put on by Neck Arts, and um, it's a costume, dance, party, family, fun event, 7 to 10 p.m. Birdhouse Band is going to be playing. That's uh, Mavis and Katie Rowell, and I don't know exactly who all. Um, so that's happening before we close down. Great. And the construction is going along nicely, and, oh, good. and they'll continue to be working, but turn the heat off and stuff. They used to work in the cold. <laughs> so is there a timeline for the construction? Um, I don't know. I mean, how does it work? Yeah, they're working until they're done. <coughs> no, okay. we have All them right. until they're done. Okay. Yeah, the lift has been ordered. The different windows and things have been ordered. If you go on Depot Street, you'll see that the old, what used to be a fire exit door mm -hmm. is now turned into a it looks just like all the other windows. Yeah. We got a bulkhead for sale. Yeah, there's a bulkhead to be used so another town building or something. Yeah, because it Put needed to move four inches, so it changed. <laughs> it got taken off. It's relatively new. I mean, it was put on by in John Jewett's time, so it's not super old. It's a decent bulkhead. Okay. okay. Other reports? Uh, new business, old business. 
old business? You want me to ask the Do old we, business? Yeah. yeah. But I'll go ahead and go first. You got one too? Yeah. I've got one too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can articulate this. So where are we with engage, re-engaging with SE Group for the pedestrian bridge? Or engineering ventures or um, do we doing to do some that? sort of limited agreement with Just them? Call them up. Because Some don't we want that to Some happen next year before winter, so that we can go out to bid? If we we don't have to go out to bid, not but for the if, wall work. But if we need, um, if we need to, if the bridge needs to be longer or mm -hmm. whatever, yeah, we need to know that, mm -hmm. and there might be design work involved. Mm -hmm. And they'll go back, and I'll have to go back to permitting again. Oh yeah, if yeah. it's different. Might not so, we don't know. so, but we need to get them on back on yep. track Didn't in some limited what are you, way. What are you talking about? The pedestrian bridge. I thought that was on. Oh. Mm -hmm. so. I'd like to get the wall work done. And the wall work is the reason that I said no. No, no, no. 2.4 million wall work. Well, we, gotta, we don't have the money to do it, but I'd like to get that done. <coughs> we need to bond for that. Why do, why, why do we need to do that? In anticipation of FEMA. FEMA is obligated $2.4 million for this project. They've obligated the money. So we need to spend the money to get it back. So we need to bond. We need to do an anticipation bond for it. Probably a spring bond day. I guess I just I can't. I don't know. I, I just can't do it. Well, we can just leave the wall the way it is. Oh, I just said it's too hard for me to think about Wasted money like that. You we're talking between the swinging bridge and the diner. Yeah. Spending two point yeah. four million dollars on a wall that holds up Main Street. But we uh, just that section. We're not talking about the whole. Just that. Yeah. That yeah. Hundred feet. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what it's bid out of. Yeah. But my point is, is that doesn't need to cost that much. Who says it needs to cost that much? If we, we don't have, do micro piles. If we re if we have another engineer look at it and don't do micro piles, it's going to significantly reduce the price. So we can. So why wouldn't we do that? We we definitely can. I mean, I, I want to fix it and all, but I mean, you guys, I I'm, I'm in the construction world. Sure. Two point four million dollars. Yeah, they have. That's re absolutely ridiculous There's for to put piles. I got a joke. Piles. It's bedrock. It's sitting on bedrock. Well, Sitting on bedrock. There's lead sticking out of the ground. Everybody, when, go to the diner. I'll pay for everybody's breakfast tomorrow. I'll look out the window, and you see the bedrock. <laughs> what time? What time? Any time. Yeah. I'll leave my. No, I'm, no, I'm there at six, but I'll leave. leave I'll get my credit card. Okay. <laughs> just so, so you can look out the window and see there's, there's bedrock. Um, so that's what's right there. So can I? <clears throat> yes, you can. I'm not trying to be hard. I but understand I, exactly what you're I saying. Mean, this so, is the problem with why our bids. I mean, this is a great we, example, not to cut you off, but these bids we got tonight is a great example of that. Because they know the state's giving us because money. Because they know there's yeah. a, a abundance of work out there, there's no contractors, and if you if your cycle, so I'm busy now, so I'm throwing out bids of a half a million dollars for a hundred thousand dollar project. Well, if it, it rotates around to where I don't have work and that bid comes up, I'm sitting pretty. <clears throat> if not, and I run out of work, I just start bidding normal again. So we're paying. You know, if somebody can explain to me why we have to have $2.4 million in this little section of wall, I have the, the capacity to understand that. But I'm telling you right now, you're going to have to have a pretty hard job <laughs> convincing me of, of spending that kind of money. And I mean, I'm not a firm believer that it's free money. Uh, I'm a believer of well, it's our money. I would agree. Well, I'd rather have, be able to have funding to fix something like our sewer plant I mean, if, as, yeah, as no, in no, America, no, if we no. keep pissing this money so, away, there's only so much money to go around. Can I tell you where the costs are Yeah. in that project? Yeah. So from what I understand about that project, it's a complicated project because they have to sheet the entire yeah. Main Street. So the sheeting alone is a cost. So they have to drive sheeting in to hold that Main Street. And it's really tight there. Yeah. And then the engineer that stamped it, designed it eight times the amount of strength it needs to be. So I've been told by people, by contractors that have looked at it. 
So the micro piles that they've said, I think they've called for like seven or 70 something micro piles. Or, okay, or I don't know what the number is. So you could, so when an engineer stamps the drawings, like their liability is on their engineering. So that's why they design things eight times the strength. So they're not doing their job. They're designing an eight and times the strength. And is that engineering ventures? The yes. strength, the strength, the However, strength. So, so if we want to do something differently there and re-engineer it, value right. engineer it, we have to pay, we have to pay for an engineer to, to <coughs> re-engineer it and look at it like we can totally yeah. do that and I think I think that's our we're, we're, that's our yeah. being responsible so we do have a project obligated by FEMA we do have to do the work how we get how we who we pay for an engineer how they engineer it the means and methods of the project is all in the cost so I we, agree so, yeah. so I would go to on record as saying to you guys uh, if you I understand that this is probably, you guys, if, if the select board feels it, move forward, move forward. I, I, I just have a problem with it. Yeah. I just think this should not be an old business and it should be an item because the last, I remember us having an open conversation about this, we were putting that project entirely on hold so that way we could focus on other flood related issues. It's okay if it comes back up, right. but I don't want to make it any, the, the bridge. The bridge. Yeah, but even. Bridge. But that's what was just brought up, <coughs> and then it turned into this conversation. Yeah. So I think, like, sure. So, we can do it as an item next so time. yeah, sure. Yeah. What? So we can do it as a, we can talk about it as an right. item next time. But uh, to your point, you're right. This was about the bridge. Yeah. But the wall has to be the the bridge has no FEMA funding. But the bridge and the, and the 2.4 million that whole project is 100 percent no cost to us as a taxpayer. There's seven. We'd have a 25 percent cost on top of what the state would put in. So 12 and a half percent would have to come out of our coffers. So that's so that's something. Of, yeah. 12 percent of 2.4 is pretty high. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, not to, I, I'm not, my that goal is not to postpone any of this, but. That, that actually might be 90%, because there is a portion. But either way, there's going to no, be. No, it's not 90%. So it's, but either it's way, it's, it's, it's town's going to be obligated to some, some of the money. Yep. Um, and that has to be done before the bridge, the wall. Does it? I don't At the same time. It can be done at the same time. It was designed so, to do at the same time. So we so don't have the money. We don't, my point is, we don't have the money for either one. I think well, we are close on, and we have a plan to we're fill the gap. Close the for bridge. the bridge, and if we don't pursue the bridge for next year, most of that money goes is away. only yeah. extended to next year. Yeah, and, and, and we one of the reasons we said last time, <coughs> last time we discussed it, that we thought it was just going to have to go on hold, was that I believe that was before we had the all funders meeting. Right, and, and we then found out that they would extend it, it and they would let us. Everybody was more cooperative than we had anticipated. So that wasn't reported back to us. It was not. So that's definitely our bad. So we can just move this to an agenda. I don't yeah, for next time. time. I think that's yeah. a good idea. Um, it sounds like there's new stuff, new information. There's new information has come to light. We were pleasantly surprised. <coughs> So we did talk about the funders meeting. We talked about the funders oh, meeting, we and we talked about how there's. I talked about last meeting. I think uh, how um, we found out that we can go back to transportation <coughs> funds um, for another for another <coughs> round of funding yeah. for the same project, and so and that our, application will get done uh, mm -hmm. and be due sometime in November, I think, or something. I don't know, January. I don't know, but it's right. for and next Tracy's season. It's for next season. Yeah. Yeah, so the idea is we could get the bridge and the, the project of using the bridge and the wall go together largely is because you're working in such a tight space and you're going to be really disruptive to Main Street. It'd be ideal to do it all in one shot. Right. Okay, so we should have an uh, item for this next time. I totally agree that it would be awesome to bring the cost down on the wall. I guess. 
looking at whatever other engineers. I think the only, I, I would say our first and best hope would be to push back on engineering ventures and say, could you, you know, here's the feedback we got from contractors, could you look at this again? Mm -hmm. Because we're going to have a hard time getting somebody else on board starting from nowhere. And we could bid it out, we could put it back out on the street and there's contractors hungry for work and we can see what competitive bidding does. That is an option. Right. All right, so we'll, we'll talk about it next time. Yeah, I don't so know, know more. Just, that's wild to me. But, but we're still gonna have to borrow the money. Right, in anticipation of FEMA. Yep. I just had a really quick, um, do we have any other updates, OP, on the sale? I should have asked this earlier, on the two real estate sales? Uh, we have an option agreement signed with Vermont Huts. Um, they're working on some funding stuff and some permitting stuff. I haven't seen them on that yet. Yeah, no permitting yet, but they have to get some things in order to be able to apply for permits. Yeah. And they need to get the permits before they can do the sale, uh, do the purchase. Yeah. And then the Cary Road property, the buyer has decided to do a title search. Okay. And they said they'd get in touch with me. Um, so, I, I guess they gave me the information, I'm sorry. They did the title search. Now they're just waiting for next week to... Oh, they, they want to do the permits. They want to do oh, the okay. permits. So they have their DRB, they submitted oh. their applications, and they have a DRB hearing next week. Okay, yep. great. For okay. building. For, they want for to get their, their permits in place before business. they buy it. For construction. For their business. It's yeah. a change of use. Which, which involves tearing the building down. Tearing the building down and putting in a Quonset hut and an office and, hat and changing the use. <laughs> I think there's a quantity. We, 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 we would give them the quantity. You talk to them directly. I am not brokering the quantity. Hey, I'm dealing with the DRB decisions so that they buy the properties and you guys get your money. All right. All right. So yeah, we're, that's where we're at. Yeah. I'm okay. waiting. I'm waiting on some information from them. Great. Thank you. Danny, you had one too. Oh, hey, Wake up. Yeah. No. You an old business. Right, Sherry. Oh, Can't boy, it's so worked out. Oh, oh, the cannabis. Cannondale and cannabis? The cannabis meeting. No. Oh, yes. No goes? I didn't go. I went. Thank you, Kristen. You Did you go? No, I told you guys I could. Oh, that's right. it, it was more aimed at zoning. They were told by the, the state legislature that they needed to talk to their local con control boards, but really it was it was mostly zoning and planning. People. So yeah, but, so there was no yeah. So yeah, there like, really wasn't sorry. much. I would have brought it back to you guys already. <sighs> there wasn't anything <laughs> earth shattering. Yeah. Thank you for being our representative. And he was trying to get us to. I heard. Yeah, I was already planning. Okay. I'm not much of a motivator. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You're more of a shame or through motivation. Yeah. Any, motivation other, through shame. any other slip board reports, new business or old business? All right, adjourn. Thank you.